Hello everyone, I am joined today by Stephen Bost, who is running for the First Judicial Circuit, and welcome. Thank and, you. And uh, let our viewers know, who is Stephen Bost? Sure, so I'm from Murfreesboro originally. Uh, I attended SIU for undergrad in law school. Um, after completing law school, I reported on active duty. Um, I spent seven years on active duty as a Marine officer and judge advocate, and then moved back to Illinois five years ago to begin my civilian side legal practice. And why do you want to become judge? Well, I'm, I'm passionate about the law, and I'm passionate about Jackson County. Um, this is my home outside my military service. This is where um, I've always lived, and uh, I want to be able to come back and ensure that we are providing fair and impartial services and uh, judicial services to the people of Southern Illinois. And so how do you feel you meet the requirements uh, to serve this office? Sure. So, you know, if you look back at my 12 years of service, it's been, it's been varied. Um, when I first hit the fleet as a Marine officer, uh, I was prosecuting cases. I prosecuted felony level um, sexual assault, child pornography cases, drug distribution. I've worked closely with NCIS in those prosecutions. Um, I've defended the constitutional rights of Marines. Um, I've worked at the Pentagon providing legal opinions for the offices of the Secretary of the Navy and the offices of the Commandant of the Marine Corps. And then I think all those things, just that varied practice, now my five years of doing probate work, of, of doing real estate transactions, doing municipal law, just provide me a very broad base of experience that I think will translate well to service on the bench. And so integrity and ethical conduct are obviously key to a type of position like this. So how do you hold yourself accountable? Well, I'm a, I'm a Marine officer. Um, honor, courage, and commitment, those are the coins of our realm. It's something that's been driven in my head since the first time I showed up at Officer Candidate School in 2001, and it's something that has carried me throughout. Um, I've always seen myself, as like all Marine officers do, um, we're Marine officers first. Any job that we have is secondary to that. So I think that kind of, um, those instilled values, mm -hmm. um, I think will ensure that I will bring those values to the bench. So what do you think are some specific issues that may be confronting judges in Southern Illinois and specifically the First Judicial Circuit? Well, I mean, we're in a position like a lot of um, areas in the Midwest where we have shrinking budgets, mm -hmm. um, and with that we have a shrinking tax base, and with that we have increased poverty, and with that we have increased drug use. Um, so you can see how all these things interact. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to take a lot of leadership, it's going to take a lot of creativity to ensure that the judicial um, services being offered are able to adjust and pivot to those changes, and to make sure that we're providing every resource that we can um, in, in addressing it in the way we can. I mean, it's, it's very difficult because obviously if, if you're in front of a court, there's already been a series of decisions made. Mm -hmm. um, but it is something that I think the entire community has to come together to, to get their arms around because it's, it's not going to get better anytime soon uh, because of just increasing p poverty issues in Southern Illinois. So as a judge, you will deal with both uh, criminal and civil issues. How does your background and legal experience get you prepared for this job? Sure. So my background in the Marine Corps was instrumental, um, basically living in the courtroom those years, prosecuting cases, um, defending the constitutional rights of Marines. Um, I think I have the criminal side well covered. Uh, in my civil practice over the last five years, um, you know, I think half of it is, I think a lot of the civil practice side is just having expectation management for your clients mm -hmm. and ensuring that um, it's very easy for, I think, for a lot of attorneys to stir up uh, dissension <laughs> because it's good for their bottom line. Mm -hmm. But to bring that mentality of being a peacemaker, to bring uh, people to together. Uh, and to settle those cases. That's something I've consistently done in my practice, and I think that that's something that I'll contribute to the bench. And talk to me about uh, impartiality. Can you provide an example of how judges act and rule impartially? Well, I mean, hopefully every single judge is acting and ruling imparti impartially. Um, it's, it's critical to the rule of law. It's critical for the public to respect judges and the rule of law, to know that the courts are impartial. Um, so that's something that I would bring. Um, I think it, it comes down to temperament. I think it comes down to ego. Uh, usually when you have a problem with a judge that has difficulty being impartial, it's usually because they can't check their ego at the door. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to have that kind of temperament where it's not about you, it's about the people being heard fairly, and it's about the rule of law being respected. Now you talked a little bit about money and economics here in Southern mm -hmm. Illinois a couple of minutes ago, and the next two questions kind of tie us back into that. So, you know. What role does a circuit judge play when it comes to controlling costs, especially in Southern Illinois, where sure. we see all these, you know, county boards and, and yeah. you know, they're tightening the belts yeah. a lot with budgets. So sure. talk a little bit about that. Well, I think potentially, you know, with this position, there's going to be 
that's the, that's this position is unique. You're not just a judge, right? Mm -hmm. You're also an administrator. And everywhere that I've been in my career, I've never had the luxury of just being a practicing attorney. When I was a prosecutor, I was also responsible for my Marines. I was running offices. I was handling personnel. I was making sure morale was taken care of. Um, so that's the experience that I have. My experience on the county board the last three years, I, I have firsthand knowledge of negotiating these budgets with these offices. And I know the problems. Mm -hmm. I know that the tax base is crumbling in Jackson County. So I think you have to at least acknowledge there's a problem first before you're in a position to address it. But it's going to be an ongoing issue. And so uh, the courts are going to have to get creative to either find new revenue sources, um, somehow expand that, but to do something because um, it's not going to go away anytime soon. So we're going to have to do more with less. Yeah, and, and you talked about economics here and, yeah. and how that can, can lead to crime and drug abuse specifically. So yeah. what role does economics play here in Southern Illinois, do you think? Well, it's critical. It's just it's the quality of life. I mean, it's, it contributes to everything. And so, you know, again, that's why it's going to be very difficult going forward to ensure that, you know, I think the big thing that we see potentially on the bench is um, our, our, I was the former president of the Jackson County Bar Association. Mm -hmm. um, we are not recruiting a lot of local attorneys. Our a bar is getting older. Um, so it, potentially in the future, we're going to have this situation where fewer attorneys are available. Um, Fewer people have the money to spend on attorneys. So you're going to see a lot more, I think, on the civil side, pro se litigants. Mm -hmm. um, so what services are we offering to make that an easier transition? Because people can't afford attorneys. Or there's going to be fewer attorneys in Jackson County. Mm. Um, so I think that's something that we have to seriously look at. And then that comes back to judicial temperament, too. It's very, very easy for, I think, a judge to get very comfortable of having attorneys that come in. They know the law, of course. Um, but to be able to... Um, handle it when a pro se litigant walks in and maybe they of course they don't know the civil rules of procedure um, and then having the patience and setting aside your ego yeah. to make sure that they still feel like they're heard and giving them a fair opportunity uh, to present their case. So talk to me more about temperament and what yeah. kind of personality you would bring to the bench. Um, I mean my mantra from the leadership that I've, I've been under um, I, I've served under some of the best leadership mentors imaginable um, especially my time in the Marine Corps and the constant theme is you know, you take your work seriously, but you don't take yourself seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, this work is very, very, very important. Um, but it's not about you at the end of the day. It's about that robe. It's about what that robe re represents to those people who may be coming into court for the first time in their lives and making sure that they leave there knowing that they are treated with dignity and respect. And, you know, th this is an elected position, obviously. Sure. And so how do you keep politics out of the system, especially when you have to declare sure. a party? Yeah, it, it's, it is what it is. It's an unfortunate system. I think it's, uh, it's a travesty because I think a lot of attorneys who would be great judges don't put their hat in the ring because they don't want to get into the political side. Mm -hmm. And the last 20 years hasn't made that an easier decision yeah. with how toxic things have gotten. Um, but to me, uh, I, I was reading, a, there was an Illinois Supreme Court justice, I can't remember who, who it was, but he was talking about this. And basically, and I agreed with him that, to paraphrase, the minute you put on the robe, the party goes into the trash. You're no longer, this is the vehicle to get there, this is the system we have, Right. but any party loyalties go out the door the minute you put on that robe, and that's what I would bring. Mm -hmm. All righty, and talk to me about cameras in the courtroom, uh, especially yeah. during like jury trials. What, what are your thoughts on um, that? You know, I think we have cameras everywhere, more and more. Um, my concern with cameras in the courtroom is that it would be a vehicle, a platform for grandstanding. Mm -hmm. um, the attorneys should be focused on presenting the facts of their case to a jury and not grandstanding for maybe future political office or something. I think it brings an unnecessary distraction to the courtroom and would take away of really what's important about um, presenting evidence to the trier of fact. All righty, and so there is also the judicial advisory poll. Sure. Um, it, it is made up of different attorneys from yeah. in, here and around Southern Illinois, uh, and we've asked all the candidates this question yeah. to, to kind of respond to it. Uh, now you uh, come as not recommended by this poll. Sure. Uh, your opponent has been recommended. So what are your thoughts on the poll yeah. and then the, the ranking that you were given? Sure. So the poll the poll's funny. So basically the, they send out ballots to every member of the ISBA in mm -hmm. that region, so any practice attorney and then they vote so it's a it's it's a vote it's so it's not a recommend there's not some scientific rubric sure it's a pure polling of do you recommend them for judge or not now mm -hmm. there's other peripheral issues there and you'll see that I, I scored very high on those mm -hmm. um, but I think it comes down to experience and so I'm very happy with my results I came I think 80 people voted I came two or three votes short of being recommended of the arbitrary 65 percent that's been established yes, yes. so to me, that's impressive because taken on face value, that's based on them observing me for five years. Mm -hmm. Just for five years, 64% of my peers think I should be an attorney based on five years. 
Now, what would that poll be if they had seen me my full 12 years mm -hmm. prosecuting sexual assault cases at Marine Corps Station Yuma, defending the constitutional rights of Marines at Yuma and Al Takata, Iraq, when I served with 2nd Marine Logistics Group, writing legal opinions for the Office of the Secretary of the Navy and the Commandant of the Marine Corps at the Pentagon. And I think if they had that firsthand experience with my legal work over 12 years, that would be much, much higher. All righty. Stephen Boss, he is, again, a candidate for the judicial, the first judicial circuit. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. And